welcome to the War Room. I'm your co-host, Roger Stone, sitting in with me, uh, my accomplice, I mean uh, co-host, Owen Scheuer. Uh, I have uh, just seen this news. Uh, it has been revealed that Amarosa, late of The Apprentice, now a uh, second-level White House aide in the Trump White House, who had formally requested permission to have her wedding in the Rose Garden, uh, which had been denied, evidently arrived at the White House, bewildering security guard with her entire wedding party, and had the reception in the Rose Garden anyway. General Kelly uh, is uh, reportedly very unhappy about this turn of events. Now, the real sin of Omarosa has nothing to do with her wedding party or this hillbilly-like intrusion into the White House, but the fact that she arranged for the Trump White House to send a delegation to Haiti to inaugurate the presidency of its current leader, who is part and parcel of the same gang of plutocrats who raped Haiti under Bill and Hillary Clinton and the Bushes. This is the same bloodless regime that has conducted child prostitution and child trafficking, as well as the literal rape of the Haitian people who are mired in poverty and disease. Amorosa should be fired. She should be fired by General Kelly, but she should have been fired when she pulled that stunt. I would point out to you that this was never a formal State Department delegation, but rather an unorthodox official delegation from the Trump White House. Owen, what's the the latest on your periscope? Well, I saw that story on the Drudge Report today. I'm glad that you were able to kind of give the audience a background on that, Roger, because there's always seems to be some sort of White House intrigue going on, and Omarosa has been in the centerfold of some of that in times past. But you always have the inside scoop, so I'm glad you went with that. And, uh, you know, Roger, I just want to say that it's amazing the times we're living in right now Because everything becomes so politicized where there is no news story really anymore that doesn't go unpoliticized. So you imagine this story itself will probably get some politicization and the left will try to spin this in some way, shape or form against President Trump. Oh, they're already saying that the General Kelly's being upset with Omarosa is racist because he is white and She is obviously a woman of color. Uh, This woman is a grifter. She specifically requested permission for a White House wedding, which would have been most inappropriate as she is not a member of the first family. General Kelly has cut off her access to to, uh, the president, uh, but she remains on the payroll. As I point out, she did very substantial damage carrying uh, the uh, message of a ruthless, pro-Marxist regime in Haiti uh, of oligarchs who are literally robbing that country blind. Essentially, the Clintons and the Bushes uh, absconded with hundreds of millions of dollars in earthquake relief funds, but the one area of the island that was untouched by uh, by the national tragedy they did spend recovery funds to build a state-of-the-art port. That way they can export the gas, the oil, the minerals, and continue the further rape of the Haitian people who live in abject poverty and disease thanks to the uh, inaction uh, of the post-earthquake recovery that was supervised by Super Ambassador Bill Clinton and his wife, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Well, and while we're on that story, uh, just to kind of retreat and and put it back out there, you know, in the hospitals that the uh, Clinton Foundation supposedly built in Haiti, 
We're nowhere near the population dense areas. They're building hospitals in the middle of nowhere. That doesn't make sense. And as far as I could tell, again, based on my research, the schools that they were reportedly building, I'm not even sure if anybody ever knew or, or heard of those ever actually going up. So this is just yeah. more of the Clintons basically robbing people blind. Essentially, virtually nothing was built. Uh, the enormous contracts were paid out to companies that had no experience in home building or school building or hospital building or road paving. Uh, but very, very little ever got done. Uh, the largest uh, uh, prefabricated home contract turned out to be a Ponzi scam. They built nothing. Uh, more friends of Bill. So uh, it, it is. Uh, this is why Omarosa needed to go down. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump, I think, is being lulled to sleep by his senior advisors who do not see the danger of Robert Mueller lurking uh, just ahead. The idea that Mueller can even continue to function as a uh, the special prosecutor in view of his public record is really extraordinary. You know, he led the 1991 probe against the Bank of Credit and Commerce International, the infamous BCI, failed to prosecute the largest, literally biggest bank swindle in history, which also allowed the illicit financing of terrorism and the arms. The director of the FBI squashed the just before 9-11. He even allowed one FBI informant to be disloyal to the U.S. in preference to the Islamic terrorists they were profiling. He allowed, on 9-11, multiple members of the bin Laden family to escape the country without being questioned. Uh, and uh, this is at a time when all airspace was closed down to Americans. Uh, in, in order to make his record look better, they entrapped 100,000 uh, people who were immigrants here who were guilty of nothing whatsoever more than being in the wrong place at the right time, lost them as terrorists, held them in prison for multiple years without trial, and ultimately none of them were prosecuted simply to make his enforcement numbers look better. This is the kind of man we are dealing with, Owen. I want to get back into Mueller on the other side, but before we get to the break in this segment, I just had a thought that I wanted to run by you so you could uh, kind of straighten me out here. Perhaps I'm venturing far off the trail, but what do you think the odds are that this Omarosa wedding outtake could have been a co-opted event scripted to try to demonize President Trump in the media? Am I, am I reaching here? Am I too out in left field, Roger, or could there be something to that? Yeah, I know. I think that it is uh, leaked because it shows the the uh, guile and the artifice of Omarosa. And this is mostly going to be a gossip pages story. This is a page six type story. Uh, it only becomes anti-Trump if Kelly now moves on Omarosa, which I be, believe based on her disloyalty and insubordination, he should do. She applied to have this event formally in the Rose Garden. It was denied. She went ahead and did it anyway, simply by showing up and pulling her way in. Hmm. Yeah, that seems uh, a bit strange. And then, of course, the media coverage, the outburst and everything. And you know that these people are foaming at the mouth to do anything to try to de-legitimize President Trump. On the other side with Roger Stone, we'll get back into what's coming with the Mueller uh, fake witch hunt investigation. I've got a question for Roger uh in expectations of what we might see with Sessions testifying before the House Judiciary Committee next week. We're going to get Roger's expert take on that on the other side of this break. You don't want to go anywhere, folks. And please, as always, support us at InfoWarsStore.com. You want to give a big political swift kick to the groin, to George Soros, to Chuck Schumer and the likes? You go to InfoWarsStore.com, you purchase our products. That's how you give them a political kick right to the groin. Welcome back. You're on The War Room, and I'm your host, the unseen Roger Stone. Last week, when I proposed that the president demand a special counsel be appointed in the matter of Uranium One, Vanity Fair, which I refer to as Insanity Fair, and Raw Story, better known as a raw garbage, uh, both 
immediately uh, came forward with write-ups that were so much thin bagging partisan crap that it was laughable. I love the incredible hypocritical argument that somehow pursuing Uranium One requires no special counsel, given how trumped up the charges are against Paul Manafort and how they amount to little more than run-of-the-mill assistant U.S. attorney level prosecution work at best. A weak indictment, to say the least. Notice that the indictment against Manafort speaks extensively about his high earnings, his millions of dollars, his expensive wardrobe, his high living on the Hamptons, and they imply that he is guilty of tax evasion, but they bring no tax evasion charges against him. If this Uranium One special counsel tax is to be pushed any further, the perfectory point must be made repeatedly, of course, that Mueller should never have taken the special counsel appointment in the first place since his doing so arguably violated the special counsel statute concerning conflicts of interest or any sort of personal or professional relationship of any individual who might be a target or subject of the investigation. That would, of course, include Mr. Comey, the protege and best friend of Mr. Mueller, the third amigo in this triumvirate being none other than Rod Rosenstein, the de facto Attorney General of the United States. Now, Mr. Rosenstein was the U.S. Attorney who supervised the investigation into Uranium One, but it also compromises Assistant Director Andrew McCabe. You remember him. He's the guy that approved taxpayer monies to pay Fusion GPS for the dirty dossier and the guy whose wife took campaign contributions from Bill and Hillary funneled through Virginia Governor Terry McCollum. Oh, yeah, you remember him, Andrew McCabe. And then, of course, you have Comey and Mueller himself, both of whom headed the FBI extemporaneous with the Uranium One investigation, which they all participated in in order to cover up. In other words, the four guys who are twisting the president's tail right now are the very victims who would be investigated under any legitimate, fair, and honest Uranium One prosecution. So given Mr. Mueller's professional ties and personal chumminess with Comey, a figure in this entire mountain of BS, Mueller's unflinching acceptance of this appointment showed right from day one and ever since that he's inherently compromised and that he is demonstrably willing to brazenly disregard any all and all ethical consideration and attorney ethics in order to wage his little attack on the president. Let's be as clear as we can. The special prosecutor law, so-called special counsel statute, expired long ago. And therefore, we're not operating any on any reasonable restraints on Mr. Mueller. He's not required to file reports with the attorney general. He is not required to seek the approval of the attorney general when he uh, is forced uh, to uh, or when he wishes to expand the scope of his investigation. Remember, Mueller is trying desperately to get his hands on Donald Trump's personal financial information, which is not public. Trust me, I've had several reports of efforts by Mueller to obtain these records of financial real estate transactions that happened 20 years ago and don't regard or involve any Russians. He is far a fear of his, a field of his mission. Owen, what do you think Sessions will say before the House Intelligence Committee? Well, I'm so glad that this is where you went, because this is exactly where I wanted to go. And based on what I'm reading, Roger, it appears that they're really trying to pin Sessions in the same type of thing that they pinned Papadopoulos on, and that is a process crime. Now, this is very strange to me, because Sessions has already recused himself, yet they want to continue to question him as part of the probe, which I only think that... Sessions' recruit, recusal is the only reason why they can even do such a thing. I wish he would have never recused himself from the beginning. But it appears to me that they want to 
handcuff Sessions into admitting a process crime that he did not disclose information that he knew about Papadopoulos at the time they first questioned him. Now, I hope, Roger, that Sessions goes the opposite direction. I hope instead of playing defense tomorrow, or excuse me, not tomorrow, next week, that he plays offense and he asks them questions. Why aren't you taking the Russian probe into the Podestas harder? Why aren't you going harder after Hillary Clinton and those involved in the Uranium One deal? Why do you continue to go on the witch hunt for Donald Trump? That's not what we've seen from Sessions so far as AG. We've been kind of upset that he's not the the junkyard dog that we hoped he'd be, and he's kind of more of a chihuahua, if you will, nothing against chihuahuas. But I think they're looking for a process crime, and I think that if we take anything from the past, Sessions is going to be just as milquetoast as he was in the past and probably just play defense. Well, I have a different take on it. Uh, I, I, I am not surprised Sessions cannot remember Papadopoulos because the man is a non-entity. He was a campaign volunteer. He was a member of a 100-member committee. The meeting in which he and Sessions uh, have their one and only interface has 50 or 60 people in the room. It's not exactly intimate. Uh, and I could understand how Sessions may have forgotten that. Uh, the testimony of Carter Page is a bit more troubling. But in all honesty, uh, I think I'd go the other way. It seems to me that the Attorney General has been somewhat forgetful about Russia and Russian contacts that, albeit they may have happened, appear to me to be fairly benign. But that's a good reason for him to step down now. He needs to step down now. He needs to be replaced by a real prosecutor as our attorney general. I nominate former uh, U.S. Attorney Rudy Giuliani or Judge Andrew Napolitano or Andrew McCarthy or uh, former prosecutor Trey Gowdy. Any of those men would be more than able uh, of doing this job and, uh, and abiding by the rule of law. The Justice Department is under the call of Rod Rosenstein. Rosenstein is one of the three amigos plotting the takeout of our president. He's in on it. He is the man who appointed Mueller, who told him to do that. They didn't even have a crime for have a special prosecutor prosecute. They launched a witch hunt investigation in which they're looking for anything, including, uh, as we see in the case of Manafort, an attempt to uh, coerce testimony in order to, and then leak, which are the inmates of the Obama Justice Department and the trademark of Mr. Bueller and Mr. Welcome back. You're at the War Room with Roger Stone and my co-pilot, Owen Scheuer. We were talking about Robert Bueller and his public record. It's interesting to me that after the investigation of 9-11, when many issues arose regarding the conduct of the FBI, uh, Mr. Mueller took the position that none of those issues, uh, that those issues were, however, quote, non-starters. Uh, as many cried foul during the NISD investigation, the FBI failed to pursue even a single complaint, allowing the NISD to present material that actually violates the laws of physics. During the CIA's rendition period, when the CIA was conducting torture programs, even as FBI agents warned against it, Mueller gave his tacit approval. Agents were simply instructed not to document any such torture and that all war crimes complaints were be made to disappear. During the Obama administration, Mueller said he was unsure if the U.S. government could assassinate U.S. citizens on American soil without a trial of their peers. He actually testified at the Congress to this extraordinary uh, claim. Mueller crippled the efforts to investigate the largest financial fraud ever perpetrated on the American public, the mortgage crisis and meltdown that started in 2008. By 2010, it was clear that there were crimes of scope and magnitude never before seen in the financial world, yet investigations did not lead to a single prosecution or incarceration of even one single guilty banker or financier. Millions of Americans lost their homes and their livelihoods due to fraud 
and the guilty entities, thanks to Mr. Mueller, were allowed to go bankrupt and shred the evidence. So Mueller participated in the largest expansion of mass surveillance in the United States history. The super-secret FISA court revealed in November that as many as 30,000 Americans were illegally placed under surveillance under the Obama FSA. This list included yours truly, Roger Stone, Paul Manafort, Donald J. Trump, and numerous others, most likely Carter Page. Yet, when asked about the scope and purpose of the surveillance, Mr. Mueller and Mr. Comey both prevaricated before congressional committees. There can be no doubt that his personal relationship with James Comey is the cherry on the top of the Sunday. The single greatest reason why Mr. Mueller must resign as the special prosecutor. There you have it, Owen. Well, I'm just curious when, you know, it's no longer going to be us having to come on air here, Roger, and break down the deep corruption of the Rosensteins and the Mueller's. Uh, I'm wondering when we will actually get some action from our government to call this stuff out. Now, you you said in the last segment, which I think is is headline worthy, I think news breaking worthy, uh, that perhaps it's time for Sessions to step down. And perhaps even this hearing next week may be the proper time. And maybe it's time to get someone in there who's going to actually provide some bark at the DOJ instead of just a whimper. So I'm, I'm, you know, Roger, it's really absurd that we even have to talk about this. Everything that you're covering is cut and dry. There's no doubt the swamp investigating the swamp, the rats looking for the rats. And in the meantime, they're spending all this money. You know, judicial watch just filed a, a, a FOIA request to find out how much money has been spent into this Russian probe. I mean, we're talking about millions of dollars spent on a witch hunt, Roger. No, uh, Robert Mueller is now conducting one of the most transparently partisan legal hit jobs in the history of the United States against the duly elected president, Donald J. Trump. He's ignoring precedent. He's ignoring the law by not stepping down immediately, even ignoring his multiple conflicts of interest. The public's losing confidence his impartiality is enough to merit a resignation, but he just doesn't care. Au contraire, he's digging in for a fight. He's going to move on our president. Uh, yet General Kelly and the others around the president lull him into a false sense of security. Let's be very clear. Uh, Mr. Papadopoulos was a volunteer with no authority in the Trump campaign. He was appointed to a foreign policy advisory board under the supervision of Sam Clovis, and under the authority of Corey Lewandowski. The meeting that he had with the president and others on this so-called panel of foreign policy experts happened under the campaign leadership of Corey Lewandowski. When the repeated emails from Papadopoulos to Clovis and presumably Lewandowski did not yield approval of a cockamamie idea what was forward of a meeting between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. And after the transition of leadership in the Trump campaign by Paul Manafort, Papadopoulos emailed Manafort at proposing that he could set up a meeting with Putin. Manafort's response was to email his deputy Gates and say, kill this idea immediately. Who is this guy? cut him off, this committee needs to never meet again. Now, both of these documents, Papadopoulos' proposal and Manafort shutting it down summarily, were provided to the special prosecutor by Ty Cobb, the president's lawyer. And they made no difference whatsoever. Papadopoulos, who was a nobody in this campaign, was indicted anyway. So much for lawyer Ty Cobb advice to the executive, turn over everything you have, waive executive privilege, and rely on the good judgment and integrity of Bob Mueller. That's the worst idea I've ever heard. Roger, 
we're hearing that there are two more sealed indictments in Mueller's probe. I've heard that it's going to be Tony Podesta and uh, General Flynn. What are you hearing about this? Uh, if Podesta is indicted, in my view, it will be a head fake uh, because the only evidence we have of a potential crime by Mr. Podesta uh, is a failure to file when he was representing a uh, Ukrainian uh, political party uh, of a foreign country. And therefore, uh, if he was lobbying, he should have registered. Manford is uh, charged with lobbying without registering. But in fact, he hired former Republican Congressman Ben Weber, a Republican, and Tony Podesta, a Democrat. Roger, I'm sorry. Roger, I'm sorry, but I got to cut you off right there, because what do you make of the news and the allegations that someone tipped off the Podesta group to file the exact papers that the Manafort that Manafort didn't file? Because the same day that they're saying he didn't file the papers in time, the Podesta group just happened to file. What do you make of the allegations that someone tipped off the Podesta group that this was coming down the pipeline? Not necessarily true, uh, because the uh, there there's a definition of lobbying. Manafort's work for the party of regions was in Ukraine, where he was running a campaign. That is not lobbying the federal government. If Manafort did not lobby, did not contact or direct others to contact, uh, uh, you know, members of Congress or others in the government, he technically would not have to uh, file the lobby. Now, they both filed retroactively, which is very common. By the way, even if they were both guilty of this crime, it's a $5,000 fine and a slap on the wrist. It is very, very, very rarely prosecuted. Well, we've got one more segment with Roger Stone. We're going to flesh all of this out on the other side. Where does it end? Where does uh, where does this witch hunt called the Russian probe stop? Where does this out of control investigation into non-existent crimes stop? When will the swamp finally be drained instead of investigating itself? Final segment with Roger Stone on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the War Room, folks. And not only do we have a 30-plus hour live broadcast commencing tomorrow morning when David Knight kicks off the InfoWars live broadcasting with real news at 8 a.m. Central every weekday, we are going to run live from 8 a.m. Central to at least 6 p.m. Central Wednesday to Thursday. That's right, a 30 plus hour broadcast, a special broadcast commemorating our great victory, the great victory for the American people, the great victory for America, the great victory for truth, the great victory for patriots, the great victory for you out there who wanted to save America. We celebrate it with our live broadcast, 30 plus hours of live broadcasting tomorrow at InfoWars.com slash show. And it's all made possible by you supporting us at InfoWarsStore.com. And we don't just ask you to support us. We also pay it forward by giving you great specials and by expanding what InfoWars is doing. Folks, I got to tell you, the new studio being built right now is going to be amazing. It is going to absolutely kick butt. And I'm so excited for all of the expansion that's going on right now at InfoWars. I'm so excited for that new studio. And again, you, you out there, make it all possible. So go to InfoWarsStore.com. Look at these specials we got. 25% off DNA Force. Groundbreaking, powerful product. You got to have DNA Force. It is fighting back against the toxins in our air that are affecting our telomeres and affecting our very lifespan. This is before we're even born, we're learning now. So DNA Force, great product. Protect yourself and protect your unborn baby as well with DNA Force. How about Brain Force? 50% off still on Brain Force. That's while supplies last. We're about to be sold out of that. So get on top of Brain Force with the special. Okay, it looks like uh, we got a, we're no longer 50% off here, guys. All right, well, apparently we're uh, on our last leg here of the Brain Force supplement. We're almost out, so we've dropped it to 25% off simply because we just barely have any left. Silver Bullet, however, is still 50% off. 
How about 40% off Secret 12 Vitamin B12, 40% off Survival Shield X2. That, to me, is a must-have product, folks. That's one of my favorites, Survival Shield X2. That's 40% off right now. And we're running a special discount on Emmerich's Essentials Deodorant, 10% off with coupon code no sweat. No sweat. So all kinds of household products and everything for you at InfoWarsStore.com. The Emmerich's Essentials Deodorant, 10% off with coupon code no sweat. Support us at Infowars.com. If you want to give a big political swift kick to the groin to people like George Soros and Barack Obama and all these Democrats that want to shut down Infowars, you go to Infowarsstore.com and then we expand to the next level. Wait till you see the studio, folks. All right, let's go back to Roger Stone. Roger, pretty much everything that we reported uh, a year ago is now coming out in Donna Brazil's new book, but they're pretending like it's new breaking news. You know, it's kind of frustrating for me to see everything breaking from Donna Brazil's book, and then mainstream media says, oh my gosh, look, Donna Brazil said this, it must be true. Well, we said it a year ago, Roger. Well, but it does uh, serve to validate what we said, and therefore I think it has great value. By the way, Oh, and I'm on my way right now to uh, to Naples, Florida, where I'm speaking to the Collier for Trump Club. Uh, from 7 to 9 o'clock tonight at the Rose Seafood Restaurant at 2500 Vanderbilt Beach Road. That's uh, State Road 1100 in Naples, Florida. But I'm uh, speaking there tonight, talking about my book, The Making of the President 2017, which you can get on the Infowars.com store at a terrific price right now. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to hitting the uh, the opposite coast of Florida, a Trump stronghold, though, and a real Trump stronghold. Yeah, a state that the Democrats love having their dirty little mitts on, but Trump has, has taken that right away from them, uh, probably for the foreseeable future, too. You know what, Roger? Do you mind if I take things in a different direction here real quick, actually? Uh, lead on. Well, we just had uh, new revelations come out in the Harvey Weinstein uh, gate, if you will. And the New Yorker publishes a story, Harvey Weinstein's Army of Spies. Did you hear about this? Harvey Weinstein used the same lawyer, Jack Palladino, that Bill Clinton used to smear his accusers. Harvey Weinstein was using the same lawyer as Bill Clinton to basically spy and track and intimidate any would-be accusers of Weinstein. How about that? Yeah, it was Paladino who threatened uh, uh, the various women who uh, Bill assaulted, and that Hillary uh, actually is the one who hires Paladino to go after these women. So don't forget Hillary's role in this extraordinary little adventure. Paladino is a man who will do anything, uh, and uh, we know that he uh, was actively involved in trying to silence uh, a number of the women that Bill had assaulted. You know, it's just amazing, Roger. All of these stories, just like with Rosenstein and Mueller and their deep connection to the actual Russian collusion, now you've got the Clintons totally connected to all of the collapse in Hollywood right now. All over Weinstein. They had him at his, their events. He's doing fundraising. Same with Kevin Spacey. Now they're going down. I mean, this to me, Roger, even though the left wants to ignore this, even though leftist talking media dummies like Jake Tapper and, and Don Lemon want to ignore this, you know, they can ignore it as long as they want. But, I, you know, this is going to reach the American body politic eventually, and it's going to set in as truth. I think that's why the Democrats are literally flopping around like a fish out of water, desperate just for signs of life. Look, I think there's no point in uh, interjecting fake Tapper and Don Lemonhead into this discussion. These guys are clowns. They're buffoons. They soil themselves every day when they open their mouths. They're not journalists. They're propagandists. They're paid, paid, paid black for the deep state. They mouth with them. Crap is dished up to them. They're pea brains. Uh, and don't mistake them in any way for media or news organizations. 
The Clinton News Network is designed to cover up the news. Look at the way uh, under their former chairman emeritus, Tom Johnson, a former aide in the LBJ White House. CNN has covered up the truth about the JFK assassination. Never once reported all of the evidence of multiple shooters. Yeah, you know, CNN is beyond fake news. It's bought and paid for. It's propaganda. And I think the American people are seeing through that. Final two minutes you here. Have, you, you should have been there when Rob Dew and I formed their citadel, formed the headquarters of CNN, demanding to see Jake Tapper, demanding to see Wolf Blitzer, demanding to see Mike Smirconish. And none of them would come out. Well, How it's amazing, that? Roger. Oh, I've actually I've actually confronted most of the people you just spoke about. The only person from Main Street, there's only a couple, but the only person from CNN that I've confronted that was actually willing to have a conversation with me, to his credit, was Van Jones. Jake Tapper ran away and hid and cried. Don Lemon's controllers told me I wasn't allowed to film him when he was on a public street. So these people are total cowards. I at least give Van Jones a little credit because he's willing to have a real conversation but I actually, I got to say, Roger, I think my favorite moment from you and Rob Dew being in New York was when you were interviewing uh, Bob Corker, the dinosaur T-Rex, and uh, he wouldn't give you a comment. Yeah, but I do want to point out, when we, when we stormed CNN's uh, uh, posh corporate offices and headquarters, Rob Dew was sporting that Che Guevara-inspired hat. It was, it was a great moment in the fight for truth, I must tell you, even though we were repelled. Tapper refused to come out. Uh, some of their, you know, Anderson Cooper could have come down in his bathroom, but no. No Anderson Cooper. It was outrageous. Well, we know who CNN and what CNN really is, Roger, and we're glad that you were willing to go out there and expose them. Final 30 seconds, final comments from Roger Stone. Uh, you know, the, uh, the legal bills for my struggle and the... House and, and Senate intelligence committees have hit a half million dollars, and therefore any forward-thinking American who wants to go to stonedefensefund.com and make a contribution, God will bless you for it, and you'll have the warm thanks of the Stone family. There goes Roger Stone, folks. We will be right back on the other side. Don't go anywhere.